perfect. Hey everyone. So this is part two of my still setup. If you haven't already, go ahead and check the first video, which I talk about uh, more in more detail about my con controller. But this video is on uh, my my uh, cooling system. So I do a recirculating cooling. So I'm here in Southern California, and we don't have uh, water is just one of those things that we try and conserve. So the thought of just flowing water through the you know to cool everything and then just dumping it um, it just would seem too complicated. Um, I've been running this still over here, this little two liter lab glass still. Um, I've been doing uh, you know. I do all my experimental gin runs on that one, and I used an aquarium pump and had frozen bottles of water, and it was fine. It, I kind of had a system down. I knew I needed two you know, frozen water bottles to get through a single run, so it worked fine. But I knew when I built this one, there was no way that that was going to work. It was going to be too much work. Um, so I went and built a DIY chiller, and I'll kind of show that in a minute. It's uh, behind this wall here. So uh, as you can see, I'm running four plates. Uh, four bubble plates, and then I have the deflagmator or the reflux condenser, and then of course the product condenser. And I actually also have my my little lab glass still also plumbed to my chiller too, so I don't need to deal with uh, water frozen water bottles anymore either. But as you can see here, um, I'm running at 19%, uh, which is this lower number. Um, this top number is my boiler. This top number is my uh, column temperature. And then this number down here is my coolant temperature. So if you see over here, uh, I have some through ports in my wall. I, there's just my basement on the other side, which I'll show you in a second. And I have that temperature probe monitoring the, the, the temperature of the coolant coming in. This is purely for my own personal uh, preference. I, I like data. Um, that's just how I, how I work. I don't run my still based off of temperatures. That's just not the way to do it. Uh, I, I know a lot of people think that that's, you know, you need a certain temperature. Ethanol, you know, boils at 170 something degrees and, you know, that's just, uh, that's, you know, total nonsense. But what I do like is, uh, I like consistency. So that's so why I went digital. Uh, the numbers are a bit more precise and I can kind of know what I'm doing each time I do it. So my numbers I record. Obviously, the, the ABV of your wash that you start with really determines what the boiling point is um, and you know what numbers start where and what, when product comes out and stuff like that. But I like to log everything. Um, I have you know this log book where I put all my numbers um, so I can go back and reference and bracket and kind of just you know have some expected behavior. Uh, but everything, like I said, is, is going through that coolant, and I'll go ahead and show you that right now. Okay, so now we're on the other side of the wall. So here are those ports, the cold and hot water. Uh, underneath is my, it's pretty dark in here, sorry about that, is my um, my signal line going to my contactor switches, which I'll show you in a minute. So those come all the way over here, and this is my chiller. If I open this up. So it's your classic DIY. Uh, chiller using a window AC unit and if I kind of show you what's going on inside this is obviously the reservoir this is where the coolant is and it's just water and I'm recirculating it so there's an aquarium pump down here that's constantly making water flow uh, all over this the evaporator that's actually the window AC unit that I've kind of gutted all the electronics and rewired with the STC 1000 temperature controller, uh, so that maintains my temp. Um, this whole unit, every, everything electronic right here, is being controlled um, out of this this box. There's a contactor switch in there that's powering the outlet, the bottom outlet, and then the outlet on top is my pump. So down here is a magnetic drive pump. So this is. Um, for me, ideal for my setup because um, I can control flow of all my uh, uh, fluid and not worry about this pump. This pump will run. That's what it's designed to do. Homebrewers use them all the time. I know it's really common to use aquarium pumps, but 
uh, I needed something to push that needed to push a lot of uh, power or a lot, had a lot of power to push water around um, so that, that works perfect for me um, it's not a self priming pump so um, I've actually replumbed a drain so this is one of those coolers on wheels you know that kind of like a suitcase almost so that drain is actually where I'm feeding water into the pump that goes out to the to chill whatever I need and then it comes back into this line right here and it just constantly recirculates and then as this thing warms up the temperature controller kicks in kicks on the AC unit chills it all down and we're good to go uh, I run I can run this thing I can max out my uh, my my still at about 41 42 percent without uh, without this heating up. So at 42%, my product condenser is just keeping up. And so I'm maintaining a constant temperature, not getting cold, not getting hot. Um, obviously any more, any more power, this will, the temperature in here will start creeping up. Obviously less, um, the temperature will creep down and then it'll shut off once it hits a temperature that I've set here. So this thing works great, uh, I love it. And um, highly re recommend anyone interested. In, this is just a straight up, um, uh, you know, cheap 5,000 BTU window AC unit. Uh, I got it from Walmart. You can buy used ones. That's kind of common to do. I didn't want to fuss with getting a used one. Uh, I felt like the, the new ones were cheap already, so especially if you get them off season when it's uh, a little chilly outside. So I love it and uh, works great. Solve my water problem. Uh, the only issue I have right now, which I haven't had to deal with, but I know I'm going to, is water quality. So I have to figure out how to treat this water either by recycling it, uh, putting fresh new, uh, water in, or um, treating it with some sort of chemicals, which I'm not uh, sure about yet. So I'll cross that bridge when I get there. But for now, it's been working great.